episode 19, No When to Scold Em. Welcome to the Adventures in Lollygagging Podcast. Josh just remembered that he needs to breathe in order to continue surviving. Josh. I'm quiet. I was like, oh, I need to breathe. I always ask him to be just kind of quiet at the beginning just so I can get a noise level. And then, like, Josh is just not breathing. I'm like, oh, that's right. All last week, you couldn't breathe either. So it was, it's perfect. It's fine. It makes sense. It's all right. You feeling better? You feeling okay? Yes. Much yeah. better. Yeah, you look so. better. Yeah. You looked awful last week. It was pretty gross. Uh, we actually had to replace the microphone because you were just, there's like, it's disgusting. <laughs> That's why it's germs are on it. Yeah. There's a reason they're labeled. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And there's a reason why none of you can ever use mine. Uh, so, uh, we doing okay? Long Lee, how you doing? Hey, I'm all right. Hey, uh, I hear you, uh, you haven't slept in like three, <laughs> three, four years. Uh, yeah, four hours a night for the past five years. What are you doing? Oh, man? my God. What are, you, what are you doing? With, what are you doing? It's just, just how I sleep. It's weird. So Longley like is like a shark. Uh, Longley will literally eat anything. Like, give him a hubcap. He'll eat it. He'll eat anything, and he'll eat a ton of it. Like, every time he comes over to the house, it's like all of a sudden the pantry's empty, like, after he leaves. And then, like, and then he, like, doesn't sleep. So, I don't know. I just feel like you've, like, made a deal with, like, a like a... Some gypsy woman or some devil or something like that. Oh, That's speaking crazy. of gypsy women. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. We're still doing, we're still doing the banter. There's a little, 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 little banter going on. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Oh, like a welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Mm, how many takes does it get to the center of the Tootsie Pop? What episode is now? Like, One, uh, a two, uh, <laughs> a three. Okay. Uh, so anyway, how uh, so? How are we feeling? Because we just played not too long ago. We've actually played several. It's been a good week. Yeah, we've had it. We've had a pretty good. Like we, we. It was pretty good because we had like a good month where we couldn't really meet, but then we suddenly can meet like two or three times in a short span. So that's really great. So it's not been long since we last played, and that was just a few days ago. And it was, uh, I mean, some big decisions were made. Right. The the biggest one, obviously, is that you left Emily behind. Right. Like Emily uh, at the conclusion of that big fight with whatever those those foul folk were coming coming to assault you guys at the, mm-hmm. the site of that PHC slaughter. They came and fought you and you, you managed to, to win. But most of all, most of you fell incapacitated. Only Sophia was left standing and she had to watch kind of in horror as one of them picked up and took Emily away. And you, and you all to Emily's credit, like, and to your credit, you, you did try to look after her, go, go find her. And mm-hmm. that was probably really dangerous. Like even like a pack of wolves, if they just should have showed up right then probably would have, would have liked Ended you. all of us. And I was really wanting to do that, but like this, you guys passed your, you, you passed your checks, you passed the scout check. And so when I rolled like the chaos die, you didn't get a six. And so you didn't get any danger and stuff like that. So there's like, so I was all ready to throw like a pack of wolves and just like finish you off. Yeah. I was terrified for you guys. I was, time. I was super scared for you guys. <laughs> Uh, but you you headed west. You found the what you learned what, what you later would learn is the the remnants of the the splinter group that that moved away from the Sunbearers that was mm-hmm. led by a, a, a guy named F, uh, F. Excuse me, I can't even pronounce my own NPC characters' names. Afwin James. You found that little village, but it was uninhabited. There were bodies hanging from the trees. Yeah. When Chovy went to investigate them, the bodies had been decapitated and like animal. Animal heads were like placed. Uh, it was kind of gruesome, right? And then you found some survivors that were huddled in a cave. One of them was conscious and capable of talking and scared sh- mm-hmm. shitless, basically, well, right? Yeah, she, she almost killed me. Awful thing. <laughs> that was the scary thing. Like, like you plopped <laughs> down in the cave and got whacked over the head. But and normally that wouldn't be a big thing. But with the state you all were in, right? Like it was. Yeah. It was pr- kind of yeah. Armor for saving me, yay. <laughs> well, yeah, you guys yeah. actually have armor now, so that's yeah. nice. You have some hide armor. It's it's pretty gross. It looks pretty grimy and grim. You probably want to hose it down or something when you get packed the verdum. Uh, maybe do have a laundry day. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> I asked them to figure out some downtime stuff if we ever get a chance. I think maybe we'll just go to the laundromat. Uh, <laughs> but she also showed you a, a, a circle of standing stones, stuff like that, right? That was That had some similar writing on them. A new clue. Yeah, so you got a couple new clues the past few weeks. So you're up to six now. You got yes. some leads. I mean, one of the biggest leads is that you can you can safely eliminate a suspect in the disappearance of Gabriel. Like mm-hmm. one of one of the suspects from the from the beginning that you know was the idea of like this splinter group. Maybe like there was some sort of well, 
they're mostly dead, it looks like. And so it's unlikely. And they didn't even know who Gabriel was. And at that point, she was pretty much, she was pretty much, Mallory was pretty much ready to tell you guys anything just to mm-hmm. get her, get her to safety. So you can pretty much check that box off, right? But then also these, this, these stones between the ones that you found near the village and the ones that you found near the site where the, the PHC group was slaughtered and where Ralston's body was found. Like there's, it's, there's some sort of suggestion that there might be, there might have been a, a, some kind of civilization here or some groups here living that predate, very easily predate the time that the Rhine has been here, which is running counter to what the public message has been, that this has just been an empty territory. But if there was a group here, and maybe if those early excursions here somehow dis- you know, moved them away or slaughtered them or took over their lands, whatever, you know, something like that, who knows? Maybe that could be motivation and some like revenge is now ensuing or whatever. Who knows? So let's see. What else? So what else is new? So we brought back Mallory and Saldivar with us. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Uh, Saldivar is being carried uh, like a beautiful baby boy uh, by... By bear, so that's nice. His uh, big, beefy arms. Yeah, Bruno's out of it still. He keeps trying to walk into trees and stuff like that because he's got that fractured skull. What else? He has to remember to breathe. Yeah, I mean everyone does. <laughs> everyone should remember to breathe. It's kind of freaky yeah. when you when you have to start thinking about breathing. I hate that. It drives me nuts. I'm like now I got to breathe all the time. Anyway. <laughs> Panicked and stuff. In terms of the investigation, mm. right? It seems pretty clear at this point that Gabriel was alive. Like it's it's pretty safe to conclude that he was alive, whether he's still today alive, who knows? But the idea or the the theory that he was killed along with those other like that seems to be ridiculous. Like that's mm-hmm. just not possible. So now the question is, where is he? Who has him? Why hasn't contacted anybody? And just who are these other group of uh, these these creatures? How hostile are they? Crazy skullhead people who seem to be very strong just yeah. to be able to pick up a person like oh, i'm just gonna throw you up on my shoulder yeah and, and then the question away. is is whether or not these like mutated folk that you were fighting and those crazy skull-headed people are they the same group separate group that's kind of curious right so what kinds of things are you hoping to to like where do you want to turn the investigation like what kind of what strings are you looking to pull on at this point see if anybody in town's ever heard of the Crazy skull people that walk around. If there's any rumors or anything about what they do, mm-hmm. if they've seen them in around town, right? Maybe they somebody comes here to trade and they're just dressed up like that. Who knows? And don't forget, there was that one image, that little sketch that Chadwick was drawing that one time. That unfortunately it was Emily who saw it, so we can't. You can't really. She she described it to you all, but you all never saw it yourselves. But she did describe kind of a brutal figure with skulls and stuff on shoulders and heads and things like that. So are they the same? They're different, whatever. Mm-hmm. What about the, uh, do we have some other clues? You got that, that bag of saltpeter, right? Mm-hmm. What's saltpeter used for? Erwin, Mr. Alchemy over here. Used for gunpowder and the uh, oil that's like, is kind of like acid that melts off the uh, uh, it's, fungus. It's, quintessence is just a measurement. It's uh, it's royal water. Royal, royal water, water is like the actual item. So royal water is, is basically acid, yeah. so to speak, but it's used in a, and like you, you knew this because you got your the alchemy check. Uh, it is used as a cure for some kind of disease called orcs molt. And we, and you all have already discovered the fact that there are potentially guns. There's a cache of guns that are circulating around everywhere. And like if saltpeter is used in gunpowder, there's a natural connection between those. Maybe that's what that saltpeter is for. Maybe it's got nothing to do with it. But then everyone's been suspicious of that, that Dr. Engman and the Ailing Isle, the fact that the, the elder Stuber. They were taken too, and everyone was suspicious about that. And so, disease is something that people are concerned with. So, yeah, there's some definitely some things to to think about. Uh, but you have to get back to Verdum first. Um, the other thing is that you all lost a guy too. Like, not only was Emily taken, but Reinhold Goth, who was your guide uh, from the Sunbearer, uh, Sunbearer Abbey, he's dead. Like, he's straight up dead. And I know that you guys were kind of nervous about wanting yeah. to go back there, but we... They I mean, will we, not be happy. We, yeah. we, we're we bringing two more people from the Abbey, right? They're not going to get mad that we saved people who split off either, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, but you guys have to go back, too, because they got your cart and all your money. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah we Whoops. Do. Right. Whoops. If only you knew then what you know now. Yep. All right. So anyway, that's our that's our look back here. So the episode ended uh, as you all had passed over the bridge, uh, 
crossing the Tercevella River, a couple hours south, you found a copse of trees. And the most peculiar sight, you saw a very slender, <laughs> ugly-looking man climbed and hanging on to a branch very high up in a tree, holding on to a jar, screaming down at a woman on the ground saying, uh, you stole it, it's mine, something to that effect. Uh, and Ashley, why don't you go ahead and describe once more what your character looks like. So Lavinia is an adult elf. She's got dark skin. She's very tall. She's six foot two. Uh, she's got honey brown light hair, emerald eyes. She's just of a normal build. She's got, I think like gypsy kind of outfit. She's got lots of skirts, full skirts, um, and then some furs because it's super cold outside. She's just kind of standing there and she's got her hands on her hips and she's glaring up at him in the tree because this is like the fifth time he's done that this week. And then she turns around and she witnessed you guys. And uh, she goes, who are you? I'm Erwin. We're trying to come back and we're not doing so great right now. Yeah, I mean, describe the group. Covered in blood, <laughs> uh, limping. We have a very large corpulent man who looks beyond confused of how to even walk properly without falling over. Uh, a very tall man carrying a very small man. A very small man standing next to him. And an average height uh, lady, all of us covered in blood, look absolutely terrible. Uh, might even see some open wounds on Bear with how bad he got injured. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure where Chovy was hurt. Clonk on the head. No, so yeah. maybe he's got a big old lump on the front of his head that's like real purple. Oh, oh, we don't want any trouble. We're not feeling too good right now. I'm not looking for trouble. What did you all run into? Not quite sure what they were. More along the lines of uh, just odd folk that attacked us. So then she just kind of pauses and she just sighs and she turns and she looks back up at the man in the tree. And she goes, Roderick! Get down. Open the jar. Look, listen. Is your song in there? Open it. So you see him. You see him like look really. He looked down, and when you when you when you look up at him, you can tell that he's he's not in great shape. He's got like a chunk missing from his nose. His basic skin color looks kind of grayish. He he looks to be fairly sickly. Very very slender man. Uh, kind of balding in the front, but then has come sort of longer hair that's got all sort of these big old streaks of gray in it. And he just looks down at her, and then he, as if he's considering for a moment, you see him open up, like kind of wrap his arm around like one of the branches of the tree, and then like twist open the jar and like hold it up to his ear. And it's like when you look at it, it's empty. The jar is completely empty, and he just holds it up to the ear, and he he listens for a moment, and he gets, you can see this sort of slump in his shoulders as it, like a disappointment overcomes him and he just uh, lets it drop. I'm going to try and catch it. Okay, uh, roll. Uh, we'll call it a challenging coordination test. I rolled a nine. Okay, yeah. And so you, you grab that, that little mason jar before it falls and hits the ground. And it's empty. And then, I mean, you don't have the lid. He's, yeah. We probably still have the lid, but we'll say the lid falls at some point too and you can grab that easily enough. And then he just stays up there. <sighs> just thinking, not yet coming down. You, you said that he steals from you a lot? I mean, it always comes back. But he's looking for some sort of song, and he thinks it's in my jars. What can you do? You feed a man once, and he always comes back. Because you stole it from me. Lavinia just kind of shrugs and ignores him, because this is pretty average behavior for them. Don't trust her. She steals things. Uh, Says I'm the just... man with no nose who doesn't know how to feed himself and he always comes into my house and takes my things all the time. He eats my food. What can I tell you? Anyways, you all look quite frankly terrible. Are you on your way to town? That was the plan and I'm going to give the jar back to you. Uh, oh, thank you, my dear. You're so very sweet. So she takes the jar. She kind of pockets it and one of her numerous just skirts like you're not even sure really where it goes but it's somewhere and then she kind of starts walking towards you guys as she's dusting her hands off on her skirts and she goes well i'm on my way to town you know my mother taught me some things about you know healing i could probably help you and your friends a little bit if you would like that would be uh most appreciative thank you very much keep your eyes on your pockets roderick mind your own business Stay out of my house. Are you coming to town with us or not? I thought you wanted a nice dinner. And like a little kid, like his little, little lip comes out. He's just kind of pouting at this point. He doesn't 
doesn't come down yet. All right. Well, you know where I will be when it is time. You meet me at Charlotte's house. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Lavinia, she just kind of wanders closer to you guys. And she looks at Bruno and she goes, Oh, my poor dear. You, your head, it looks like it has been hit so hard. And she kind of loops her arm with his arm as she helps. To, she's pl- intending to help lead him towards town. And he's just eating a turkey leg. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. You precious baby boy. <laughs> oh, no, don't talk eat- with your mouth full. Shut oh, up. Oh, Be quiet, oh, oh. please. <laughs> <laughs> Doing my best, Keith. Okay. All right, so are you actually going to attempt heal, heal tests? Are you going to try to heal them? Uh... Should I do it right now? Or it's up to you. Uh, he'll test. I mean, it's sending 10 to 20, 10, 20, you know, 10 minutes to 30 minutes or so, something like that. Okay. Usually. It's up to you. Um, I am out of bandages at this present time. I was intending to buy some in town. Uh, do you all have any? I can help you at this present moment. I have some things I was planning on trying to make into bandages, but since you oh, are... Oh, I can uh, help with that. Would you like? Yes. I'll give her some of the canvas. Okay. All right. Um, and I would say... Probably taking a look at Bruno, you probably think he needs a little bit. Mainly for him, it's some bandaging, yes, like like redoing like the bandage on the head, but it's also mm-hmm. like he needs like recuperation time. He needs to yeah. like rest. All right, so uh, you're going to attempt to make some bandages. Do you actually have all the ingredients? Do you have... It's. I thought it was just the canvas. Is there something You could else? do... There's two different types of bandages you can make. There's like regular bandages, and then there's chaos bandages. Bandages need uh, uh, need some kind of honey like a honey, like a something like that, and then uh, re- and then chaos bandages. You can try to do it without. All I have is the canvas. I don't have any honey. You can still try. Hang on. All right. So a bandage needs uh, one strip of canvas, which is fine, uh, but also a honey pot. Honey pots themselves have multiple uses. But if you so let's say you don't have any sort of honey pot, then you can try to do a chaos bandage. Uh, so whenever you try to use a chaos bandage, though, when you're actually you know after you've done concluded. Like the heal test, the patient has to roll a chaos die, one d six, and on a six, the bandages are ineffective and instead cause infection. So it's kind of risky, um, but it's you know it's still one out of you know it's a six on d six, so it's still one six chance it can work. So you can if you're crafting, you ha- you can prepare up to three strips at once, but the number of strips that you're trying, the number of bandages that you're trying to actually craft at one time increases the difficulty of the heal test. It I only kind of, have two strips of canvas, so okay. So then, uh, if you wanted to do two, it would just be a standard heal test. Might I possibly have honey in my house? Roll, uh, let's say, we'll roll D100, and do you want high or low? Do you want 51 to 100, or do you want 1 to 50? Coder, what am I feeling? High. 41. Nope. Uh, you did not False. have, you don't have do any honey have in your house, unfortunately. Sorry. There might be some in town. I'm sure you can, you can, you can certainly buy some in town. That, okay. that, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but you can try to do the chaos manage if you like. I was just letting you know. I'm not sure exactly how the whole thing is. I've only seen Bruno. Hey, well, how your friends are looking, I think uh, it would probably, with how the day is uh, drifting, I say it takes time to go back to town. And then I will help heal. Okay, then well, let's head back to town. Thank you. It's, it's unlikely you're going to make it to Verda mm-hmm. before dark, by the way. It's more than. It, oh, is it? Yeah, it's, okay. it's kind of dark mm-hmm. out. It's getting, it's getting there. And remember that it's not so much, like, you could get there, like, but before dark might be a little dicier. Well, then. Choose to camp out in the wild. Uh, Sun Bear is, the Sun Bear Abbey is much closer. You can get to the Sun Bear Abbey before dark. We needed to go to the Abbey and get our things that we left and uh, let them know that their guide that was taking us uh, has unfortunately not been as fortunate as us as surviving the attack Ooh, that is terrible you say you are going to the abbey and lavinia looks briefly uncomfortable but then she looks towards bruno and she's like okay we will go to the abbey first she just kind of looks at you guys and she goes all right well lead the way are we ready to go do you all have your things yeah, let's get going. Thank you for coming to help with us. We appreciate it. Of very course, much. of course. And she kind of reaches down and she briefly scuttles back to her hut and she grabs a few things and then she comes back and she latches onto Bruno again. Sophia's going to point up to the guy in the tree. He's no longer there, actually. This whole time oh. this is happening, like somehow just like just got down and left. He's a sneaky little devil, that guy. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. Don't mind Roderick. He's a very weird man. He always comes and he goes. He likes the forest best. No, I was so. just hoping he didn't go to Charlotte's house because you won't be there. Uh, she knows how to handle him if he shows up. It's not he's not my son, so it's no big deal. Yeah, it's he's he's in his thirties. He's an adult man. That's so okay. All right, so you all are heading to the Sunbear Abbey. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, you head in that direction. Uh, as you get, because you're coming from the northern side this time, there's eventually you do see uh, off to your right, so to the west, you can see one of those larger watchtowers that they have dotted around the outskirts of their of their land. Uh, and someone calls out, similar to the first time you approached. They're like, oh, who goes there? Uh, it's us. We are back. Uh, we were just out looking with... And then we got attacked. We're not looking the best right now. He spends a he spends a couple seconds pondering whether he should uh, he should lecture you on on the use of the word us, like the such familiarity as if you all are well known or something, whatever. But he, he chooses not to. Uh, but yeah, when he sees that you're injured, he he sh- you know he he tells somebody whoever is in the the tower with him, and uh, you see Heather just pops out. Look at that; she's just everywhere, <laughs> and begins to uh, begins to escort you uh, again into the center of the co- compound. They don't seem to let you just kind of go off by yourselves. Like, they bring with you. But Heather along the way is asking over, you know, about Reinhold. Like, where's Reinhold, et cetera, et cetera. Because she, she does remember you all. Uh, do you all tell her what happened? Fortunately, he has passed. When we were attacked, um, he did not have the fortune to escape. It was uh, very close for all of us. He was quite brave. He actually saved members of our party with his bravery, but unfortunately, his bravery cost him his life. So uh, she she gets a little you know, she's a little upset about it, but at the same time, after you know that you know the customary that's awful. Oh my gosh, it's so sad type of type of response. She also kind of said, "Yeah, but she won't like this at all. She'll be most upset with this news." Most upset. And you see her just kind of like start to fret a little bit. Is this news we should tell her ourselves or who? Her eyes just go wide. Um, It would be better probably coming from, she thinks. Well, it would be more noble if you told her yourselves. We don't shirk our responsibilities for those things. If we need to take account for something, we can... I can't say that she won't... She's so... Somewhat of a wrathful woman. It's possible she she would be very upset with you. I don't uh, think she's liked anything we've said so far, so another one won't make a difference. We've not. You've not met, met her. her. Oh, I think <laughs> <laughs> you're talking yeah. about someone else. No, I'm talking about the Abbas. You're talking about Madeline. <laughs> you need to get more sleep, buddy. Uh, they're the same person. No, they're not. Sorry, but eventually you're you're led into that central compound area where you see the larger buildings. Some of the dormitories, the kind of open canopy where people uh, right now seem to be setting up some kind of meal as the sun's going down in the west. Uh, was you're invited to, um, just out of common courtesy. Uh, you do see the, the Stubers again who look at you and start counting and they notice the absence of Emily. And they come over and I imagine, do you explain? You gotta yeah. RP the whole thing out, but do you? Yeah, we, yeah. we explain what happened. So they mention... You know, that they're going to say a prayer and all that, all that, all that stuff. Um, but they seem a little bit upset uh, to the point where, uh, yeah, they, they, I mean, like Emily was their main point of contact with you. Like they seem to talk to you all. Uh, yeah. But uh, can I like turn in this little gnome I've been carrying, like to the infirmary or something? I don't want to hold <laughs> on to him. No, oh. just say him. Just keep carrying him. <laughs> just put him on the ground. Um, so I would say that. Yes, you once you get to the central area, people come to aid you. So there's other people who come up, they help, you know, help you when they see the injured people. Like they're they're doing the good Samaritan type of stuff, right? So they're ensuring people are are comfortable, they're seated, they're getting looked at. Uh they can probably do some heal checks maybe, uh if, you know, if you want. Uh I would also suggest that Mallory specifically seems very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Saldivar, the gnome that you've been carrying, is more or less unconscious. Like he's he's coming in and out of consciousness. Doesn't really seem to be be capable of talking too much. But Mallory herself, like 
she was very, very frightened, very scared. But then you got kind of crossed the river. She felt a little better. But here, she's once again getting kind of nervous. She's like, oh, he, are we staying here? Are we, we just, can, just we, get, we, we can, um, no, no, we, we could stay on, uh, on the road. We could, uh, there's other places we could, we could, we could camp out. It would be an adventure. It's, it's safer. We're, we're south of the river now. We can, we can stay wherever. It's safest here with how injured it's, we are. It's not, um, they don't like out of our and I here. They, they're not a very accepting lot. Do you fear for imprisonment or physical harm? Uh, and you can tell that a lot of the, a lot of the sunbear around you, like the not the stubers because they're new, but like some of the others who, kind of standing few, keep keep a a wide berth of her and just. They are doing the right thing when it comes to Saldivar and making sure he's healed, but they're not really going out of their way. Like, they very easily could bring her, bring him inside, put him on a cot, but they're just, like, putting him on the ground or, or on a bench. Not really we're doing too much for them. Yeah. I just... They have, they, we've, we've had all differences in the past, is what I'm saying, and it would be, it would be, I think, beneficial to all of us if we just left here as soon as possible. As soon as possible. We can leave in the morning because we're not headed out anymore. Okay. Well, if, if, okay. Okay. And she just sort of nods nervously. Like, if, if that's what you think is best, okay. I will. But we will leave in the morning. We do have early. to get to the We hill. should go early. Yes. Um, before the sun. I agree. That would be a wonderful idea if we left as soon as possible. We will leave Your as... Your friend here's injury is very serious. You all look... Very ill. We will leave as soon as possible. Did we want to talk to Madeline? And let her know that the yeah we can not involved. Do we want to tell her about the people with bonehead stuff? We went out there searching for Gabriel, so maybe some sort of clue for her. All right. Then I just wanted to make sure that we're sharing that information. Who is Gabriel? What are you all talking about? Uh, Why were you in the forest? We're looking for someone. We're here on a job. And uh, in our efforts to find them, uh, we ran across a group of people who were not very happy with that we were even there. I see. That is terrible. I'm very sorry. This wouldn't be the first time you've heard of yeah. skirmishes and yeah. whatnot happening. Specifics of which probably, you don't know. You probably never had any your own interactions with them but you no. you've heard rumors here and there superstition that kind of stuff yeah so uh lavinia just kind of like looks around and she decides that she's gonna be nearby but like she kind of like reaches towards mallory and she has bruno with her and she's like all right well uh we should we will be sitting uh over over here and she just tries to keep Mallory calm. Yeah, I, I, I actually think she would very much, she very much likes the fact that you're doing that. She's very appreciative of that. And she just kind of splits off. Yeah. She's a little hesitant to lead Saldivar, but I mean, what are you going to do? He's in, in line of sight. Uh, the Stubers again offer to let you stay near their place. Thank uh, you. Um, but, uh, we would need to collect our, everything. <laughs> we would need to collect our belongings. Oh, we, um, we took all your silver and just, no, they didn't. They're fine. <laughs> it's all there. No, they wouldn't. Um, yeah, how well do you really know them? Uh, you just you met them on a bus. That's yeah. what you did. <laughs> now you think you know everything about them. You met them on a bus. Come on. It was public transit. Um, okay, so uh, are you doing anything tonight then? See if we can talk to Madeline. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can. So eventually uh, she does come over to uh, to the central area where they're having a meal. Everyone does. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big group. There's several dozen people here at least um probably close to a, a hundred people scattered about There's some torches and fires that have been lit to, to help light the area and uh, it's kind of like this big communal meal you see the sun going down in the west um they uh they do some kind of prayer first they go through some sort of, sort of ritual just to, to kind of make sure that they're you know that they're honoring their their deity um, after a little while, you see that uh, Abbas Bickle and many others seem to be coming from the West. You would probably gather that they were at the, the temple doing some sort of official mass uh, while the rest of these folk uh, were kind of setting up this sort of communal dinner. 
Uh, and yeah, and people just sort of split out, and there's a lot of jovialness. There's a lot of uh, a lot of people splintering off. A lot of, a lot of people you don't know, you know, just here and there. Um, but you're you're welcome to eat. Uh, but eventually, you, you speak with Madeline, and uh, what do you tell her? You pull her aside. Do you uh, feel it's safe to talk out here? Do you want to talk in private? She kind of looks at you a little strangely. What have you learned? And and I, I guess she wanders off a little bit further away, but doesn't go inside or anything. Um, first, Reinhold uh, was not as fortunate as us to escape from when we were attacked. Do you think it would be best if we told the abbess? Or... She grimaces a little bit at that, as if she's really thinking. The decision is yours, but... Either way, you are suffering a, a wrath either for for not being willing to speak with her directly or for letting one of her oldest compatriots die out in the field. It's interesting how so many of you went out into the woods and only he is the one who didn't return. Emily is not with us anymore either. Who's Emily? She was one of the ones with us. Do you happen to know... Anything about this? The people who attacked us uh, were wearing these amulets, and I'll show her one of them, the little emblem. She takes a look at it, gives it back to you. Never seen this before. Um, and What does this have to do with Gabriel? At the spot where he was last seen is where they ambushed us. And I was thinking that it seemed a very specific place. It seemed like it was meant to be a, like a meeting place. Do you think these people have Gabriel? I'm not sure who has him still, but some someone. He was not. There, there is. I see no way that he was ended there. He is still out there somewhere. Uh, it, this other group, um, Zofia saw it. We were still all unconscious, but there was a group of people who were wearing animal skulls on their head came and they took some things. And then they took Emily and left. We tried to follow them, but we couldn't find them. She looks a little confused. Uh, I mean, you're describing two groups, maybe one group. She's a little confused by it, but I mean, you do your best to explain it. But she's still pretty much focused on what this is. You know, what do you think this has to do with Gabriel? And what is your plan now? She's she's concerned over Reinhold, but she's more concerned over Gabriel. Yeah. We're going to go back to town and recuperate and see if we can find anyone who knows anything about these groups or this group if they're together in town through either rumors or maybe someone being a part of it. Maybe they trade with someone in town. I can't imagine that they live by themselves out in the wilderness without any kind of contact. She nods a kind of a curt nod and she says, I'll expect updates when you've found something more concrete. Absolutely. And she like turns around like really abruptly and sort of stomps off into the darkness. So I'm going to be honest, I'm not the best with words. Does anyone have uh, any interest in being the one to talk to the abbess? Because if I do it, I'm probably going to get us in more trouble. He's just a person. Talk to him like anyone else. It's a she. I mean, I don't think that uh, you're the best person either because of your um, this not caring about their religion or their practices. I think that's all disrespectful. Yeah, to each their own. Or Everyone's just, gonna, or just uh, don't mention it, and it might go okay. I don't know that any of us are followers necessarily, but we can keep those details out of the conversation. It's very true. I don't know that anyone really wants to sign up for it, but I believe in taking responsibility if you do something. And absolutely. So, who's do you all go talk to her? I guess we'll do it as a group. Yeah. Who's going? Just the four of you. Yeah, we'll go see if we can find her. Okay. I will stay with the injured, for I was not a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It doesn't seem like you really want to sign up yeah. for the wrath that you yeah. just um, met this group. You see, I mean, when, once the, the second group comes over uh, after prayers from the, the Shrine to the West, you can see her uh, near one of the heads of the, the main table. Uh, she's got a small group around her, but yeah, she's she's here. Uh, as you go up, you can see standing next to her, there's, a, there's another woman uh, not eating, just kind of standing there, almost like at attention got this quarter staff just uh, upright to the to the abbess's left and uh, she eyes you carefully as you all walk up uh, but doesn't seem to 
doesn't seem to, to do anything to stop you. Uh, but as you as you come, as you come a little bit closer. Eventually, you can see the woman, uh, Abbas, this dark skinned woman, kind of wrinkly, wrinkly uh, skin. She you would peg her maybe in her sixties or so, maybe maybe even older than that. But kind of a hardened woman. She's still wearing some sort of. I mean, it looks like she's got even some some sort of heavy clothing, having ro- robes on. Got this big old medallion hanging down her chest. And she's got a goblet out in front of her where she's drinking something and she's picking away at some food. But when she sees you all walk up, she says, let's see if I got a voice for her. I am told that my friend, Mr. Goth, is deceased and that you all ought to blame for this. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, he agreed to come with us and help and we each lost uh, someone dear to us. So he lost himself. I dare say that loss is greater. Well, we we lost one of our long uh, co-workers and friends, so we're grieving as well. We're sorry for your loss, but we have our own too. I see. We just wanted to let you know, but you already have heard of it, we see. I know everything that happens in this compound. You are very... That's the word I'm looking for. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) You are very presumptuous people, yeah. You come, ask questions, lure one of my oldest and dearest friends off into the wild and have not the courtesy to return him in the condition that he left. In short of that, I presume you returned with his body, at least. Tell me, at the very least, you've done us that courtesy. Unfortunately, no, we were we were not able to bring him back with us. Not able, but you carried that gnomish individual. She nods in the direction of where people are kind of just walking around south of ours, huh? You seem to have no trouble carrying that one. There's so many of you, you... An old man like Ryan Hope weighs nearly a hundred and twenty pounds. Couldn't carry him. He was dead, so I saw no reason to. Saw no reason. Saw no reason. Could not pay his final respects. Could not intern him a proper burial. Could not give those who cared and loved him one final chance to say goodbye to him. Yes. Saw no reason indeed. He had a chance to do that before we left. You know what he signed up for? He knew it was dangerous. She stands up at this point. Delia, please escort these people from the premises immediately. And the woman that was standing, she takes like her quarterstaff and with like lightning quick speed, you see the the end of it come (laughs) right up to your neck, like right underneath your chin. And she's much shorter than you. And she says, okay, pretty boy, off with you. Come on, let's go, get them all. Get them gnomes out of here. Get that other one. All of you gone now. And you see everyone who's kind of around stops what they're doing and are like watching you. And you're starting to get surrounded by a fairly large crowd. Uh, the Stubers look very confused, uh, but yeah. I take it this means we can't join you for afternoon prayer. She turns around. Uh, the abbess does. She walks right up to you. And she's almost, a, she's just a little shorter than you. And she gets right up close to you and she says, Sir, I have burned figures far stronger, far smarter, and far more decent than you. Do not test me further. One more word. And it will be your last. I am going to just immediately start walking away. I think that's enough to bear. Okay. Yeah. Sophia's barely able to like choke back anything. And as soon as they turn away, Sophia's gonna turn to Bear and say, <laughs> We went there to take responsibility for what we did. If you're going to be an <laughs> asshole, you could have stayed behind. Lavinia what, sees the conflict the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> and the Stubers already brought the cart so she just kind of has Bear kind of or 
Bruno grab it and she already starts leaving like with Mallory and they've already put like the, the other guy in the cart and you guys haven't caught up with us yet, but we are leaving. Okay. Well noted that even if I'm terrible at speaking to people, <laughs> I will not let Bear speak to people any further. What do you mean? I, I'm saying they're wrong. Yes, you you don't you don't know how to speak to people, so I will no. That's I, what happened. Isn't that it? that is not how that went. Uh, nope, that was nope. Yeah. No, I agree with Bear. It's just gonna yeah, at least let us stay a night. Well, I thought we weren't staying anyways. Want to leave with a bang, you know. But we could have possibly gotten more information. We could have told her about those people and seen if she had a reaction, if maybe the Abbey knows about the things. We so many different things we could have gotten from that. And you just went up and said, well, you know, you lost your friend. Yeah, and so oh, did well. we. So, But that, when you are apologizing or telling I someone... I wasn't apologizing. That's but very that obvious. That was what we were going to That's do. very obvious. When you tell someone about, about something, you're generally respectful and not saying, oh, well, I lost something too, so it's not a big deal. That's that's the way that comes across. So, yeah. Um, not only now are we on this island uh, and this horrible place where we've almost died multiple times, we now have an entire group of people who hate us. So that's a wonderful thing to look forward to. That's fine. They can have their own fan club over here for their god or whatever. So they can do their own thing. Yeah, I agree with you, Bear, there, but at least we could have snuck a night out. <laughs> snuck. <laughs> so, could have gotten some food. So all this way, like all, the, like all this time you've been being escorted out and like you can periodically feel like the butt of a, of a quarterstaff like in the back of your, you know, in the small of your backs as they're just sort of like ushering you forward to move a little bit faster. And so you get to the very end, like the, the kind of turn off near one of the towers. And uh, the woman, Delia, says, If any of y'all come this way again, well, let's just say it won't be a kind and warm greeting for you. Now leave. Get get with you. Go. We carry on. Okay. So at this point, it's dark out. Uh, someone hopefully probably, I imagine, mark off some torches. And uh, if somebody push. wants to roll a survival check to find a uh, find a suitable campsite, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's your guys' survival? Who has the highest? Uh, mine's fifty-seven percent. Oh, okay. higher than mine. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think that's. All right, I'll light my last torch and go ahead and look for a spot. Yeah, routine. This one's it's pretty easy. Fifty-eight till pass. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you uh, you travel about forty minutes south and away find a little spot off the, the kind of the beaten path uh get some trees to to break some of the cold wind and it is lightly snowing and you settle in for the night and uh yeah you're welcome to do anything talk before or we can just skip forward to morning we gonna do a watch just in case you want to watch with me the first shift of here sounds good okay you can go ahead and roll your uh go ahead and roll your normal checks if you like, the uh, awareness test. Uh, excuse me, standard. 40. Fail. Pass. And I'll do the third one. Okay. Nice. One. Wow. Crit success? Yeah. Okay, nice. Um, I failed my one. Yeah. So uh, you, sir, uh, Bear, go ahead. You can, in the morning, you can go all the way back up to, uh, on your peril track, all the way up. So you don't have to stop. Everyone else is still in peril at this point. Uh, um, while we're watching... Uh, so, with Emily gone and the way that they seem to behave around other people, I think we're now the last two uh, reasonable people at this point. How's Sophia thinking about that right there? <laughs> the look yeah. on Melissa's face, is that what Sophia's, the face that Sophia's making right now? Uh, I think Sophia's just sort of thrown for a bit of a loop that, I mean, we're not the most genteel group in the world, but... Usually we all seem to understand where we are and what we should do a little better than we have lately. I understand that, you know, dying almost consistently is a bit stressful and losing someone that you're close with, I don't understand how even to explain how that feels and how to deal with that, but you don't behave that way to people who are giving you shelter and food and things like that. Lavinia is still awake. Okay. And she looks over <laughs> at you guys and she goes, What was that? 
We're not really sure what that was, to be honest. We were not expecting One moment, that. we are there. I am sitting. They are resting. They are trying to help and heal. I do not know why they are against these little, beautiful people. But for some reason, they are not nice to them. And the next thing you know, you go, you talk to oh, you talk to her. And I do, oh. And then she's kicking us out. And oh, I, I decided I was going to take the... Take these guys, and we go, and you guys take too long talking. I do not know. That was not expected or intended. Um, that could have gone many different ways, but I was not expecting that. The, the, the short version is that we've encountered some very, very foul creatures up north. Along the way, we lost a good friend of hers. We went to take account and tell her directly, um, but we did so in a less than... Mm. responsibility taking sort of way and she was grieved at the loss of her friend and was not uh pleased with the way bear gave that information to her the other two that is your first problem you let the boy speak and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then lavinia she just kind of like kind of rolls her shoulder and she goes it if you go up north roderick yeah, in a um, tree he was in the tree. He uh, he goes up in north very often. Uh, he's looking for a song from uh, that he said he heard up north. He thinks that they are in my jars and that I sold them, but I do not know how to capture song in jar. Do you, Silly man. Does he have any kind of idea what kind of song? Because there's this song that this lady has been humming in town. That's kind of weird. Do you remember any of it? I was trying to think of. I th- Do I remember any of the song? Yeah, you all heard it enough it. for like a good two or three days that you could he hum d- it back to her. He does not very sing to me no, the doesn't. words. Uh, he's looking to hear it. He does not say. But perhaps if he does meet a Charlotte in town, we could take him to this woman who you know, maybe. But, uh, well... We could hum it for him, maybe, and see if it's the song he remembers. I... I don't know if he should hear it, to be honest, but, you know, he's, he's Roderick. Uh, What's up with him? I don't know. He does not talk to me. He comes to my house. I found him. He was injured and froze, frozen. He was very frozen, very cold. So I took him in and I help warm him up and I feed him. And then next thing you know is he's screaming and he's wanting to hear the song because it's quiet. And he says, he says that I stole it because I helped him. And I do not know what song it is that I took, but it may be better for him if he does not hear. So there's, there's a few things you probably would have gleaned from him over time. He goes on and on about things. He, like he's, he talks, he talks about, you know, the North, he talks about monsters, he talks about... He throws the word plateau out there, mm-hmm. um, talks about the top of the world. Um, he was a, you, you do know this, this is easy enough to figure out, but you would know that he was a surveyor, mm-hmm. cartographer for, uh, for the monarchy. And he was sent on a, on a mission or mm-hmm. on a, on a job and he's Expedition. the only one. Yeah. And he's the only one who came back and he came back not right in the head. Yeah. So. Yes. He did. He, he was on a mission with uh, a party. And he is the only one who came back. Interestingly, we are looking for someone who also possibly went on a bit of a excursion and may have been the only one who survived, but yeah. is now missing. And that's why we're here. Some days Roderick is better than others. So hopefully when we get back to town, he is a better day. If not, you will have to wait your turn. <laughs> and <laughs> in Lavinia, she's just like, all right, well... I do not know why you all are taking watches, but uh, I will go and I will keep watch of these two over here. And she points towards Mallory and her companion. What's his name? Uh, Saldivar. And Mallory seems way more at ease. Like, yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. This isn't like you guys aren't safe or anything, but like you, you probably are, logically speaking, in more danger here than you would have been sleeping on the Sunbear Abbey, right? Yeah. But for her, she, <laughs> <just> bear <laughs> shaking his head. Uh, well, now you better be careful. So, uh, but um, but yeah, she seems way more at ease that, to the point where she's actually sleeping, which is not something that you've really seen her able to do much. Yeah. Uh, so night passes, uh, uneventful. 
no no issues whatsoever. Uh, morning comes, sun comes up in the east. Uh, it's cold. It's very cold. Uh, I'm going to have you all make your final toughness test. I'm probably a little out of order here, but whatever. Uh, we'll do one more toughness test. We'll make this routine. Sophia passed. Okay. Pass. Pass. Okay. Pass. All right. The, very open. the look on Longley's face. All right. I do have a question for Josh, though. Was that you doing your chaos heresy stuff with her? Because she's like yeah. a religious person. You should call that stuff out because you, you might get extra reward points for that. Uh, six points of uh, like while I'm physical doing it. Uh, like no, I mean, you could, you, start. you could do however you want. Just be like, like I declare. Well, no, it'd be like, <laughs> I guess you could say something like, you know, with the way, I guess with how Bear, like, I don't know. You can kind of weave in and out of what Bear's thinking and what Bear's saying. If, you know, whatever you're comfortable doing. It's your character. You play them however you want. I was peeking at your character sheet and being like, oh, you, you have heresy. Maybe wow. that explains why. This uh, take three sad. points of corruption if you're looking at this character sheet. That's ridiculous. <laughs> How dare you. Okay, so morning comes. Uh, anything in particular uh, that you all are doing? Are we just heading back to Verdum? Heading back to Verdum. Okay. While we're walking, can I just like scavenge? For what? You're just looking for like random stuff? Yeah. yeah. Just go and roll a survival check for me really quick. We'll see if you find anything of interest. Pass. Okay. So yeah, you pick up some odds and ends along the way. Some really basic stuff. You're not you're not in a remote part. This is more yeah. farmland area. So you're just picking up a handful of flowers here and there that might be interested to Charlotte or something like that. But uh, oh. nothing nothing too, uh, too exotic. Uh, but eventually, uh, after a few more hours of walk, um, probably before noon, you make it to the gates of Verdum, which are wide open and welcoming. And back into Verdum, you all go. Uh, so what's Bye. the, uh, what's the, <laughs> let's just, we don't have to RP everything out, but like, what's the specific plan? Like, what's your... Take Bear to Doc Quelly. Not okay. Bear. Uh, what? Bruno. No, I think yeah. you take this. Yeah, Bear Everyone needs to have his brain examined for his behavior. Okay. I think ever all of you need to go to Doc Quelly. Yeah, we yes. kind of do. She doesn't like any of you anymore. Nope. Especially Erwin. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, so you head you head over and uh, you want you want her to do a heel ch- test on Bruno. Who, 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 what's you going mean, on? She do it like on all. Literally of us? everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, if you guys got the coin. Of course we do. You have coin. I have. No, it's on her voice. Where the no, hell is that coming from? <laughs> I don't even know. Well, I can help. Yes. Certainly. You see that uh, Chadwick still there, kind of drawing off in the corner, doing his thing. You see uh, Cressida's still there. There's a warden that's still posted outside. Uh, she's still recuperating her leg. Uh, it's been about, she's been here about a week and a half, almost two weeks at this point, but she probably needs more time. I hope you're doing well, but we've all been battered around, as you can see. So Cressida looks at you, and then she looks at, uh, she looks at Bruno. I have more, dear. Oh, come here, sweetie. I'll, I'll, I'll help you here. And uh, Bruno, just sort of like with with Emily not around, uh, wanders over and just like sits down next to next to Casita. Uh, but yeah, friend. I'll go ahead and start busting out some heels. And you guys don't have bandages either, right? So you're paying for bandages and you're paying for heels. Okay. What's a Chadwick doing? Uh, Chadwick just he just normally he's just drawing or he's re, you know he's like going through things like I think looks like he's trying to learn how to read or something. Gotcha. Yeah. So well, Vinny is probably just going to hang out around Chadwick. Okay. All right, so just one by one. Uh, that's a crit fail on Bruno with a 99. Uh, that's a 91, so Irwin fail. Uh, that is a 10 on uh, Chovy. That's a success. 31 on Bear. That's a success. Uh, 64 on uh, Zofia. That's a fail. So, what sorry, does a guess. crit fail on Bruno mean? Uh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Like peril back to the yeah, yeah. His, his his peril goes up. So uh, basically, uh, he's going to bunk up here. She suggests because of the injury to the skull. Uh, whereas she she wraps up some bandages on you all and says to come back tomorrow and she'll take another look and we'll see how the healing process is going. Sophia would try to take her aside because Emily had told us about what Chadwick had been drawing. So Sophia would kind of pull her aside and just say. Um, you know, Emily, who unfortunately was taken during this time, was taken by humanoid creatures with skulls 
on their heads, who actually looked a bit like what she described as something that Chadwick was drawing last time we were here. It's just the drawings of a of a young boy. It's just his strange imagination. Don't think any more of it. I doubt it's just. Uh, I doubt it's anything more than coincidence. Just, uh... it, it would. I, I, I hate to push you, but it was a very specific drawing that looked exactly like these foul creatures that attacked us and took our friend. So I'm hoping that maybe there's been some stories about these creatures where they are. There's where they always look. stories. They're just stories. He's just a boy. You're you're reading too much and things. Can I do any kind of check just to see what her reaction? Yeah, you can is roll a me. scrutinized okay. test. Uh, what's your uh, what's your social class? Burger. In your hard towards guess. All right, this is going to be a challenging. Uh, it's challenging screen test. That's a fail. Okay. Uh, we still have... I would like to use one. Okay, go ahead. Fail the worst. You want to keep doing it? I don't think I will because I... Yes, one more. <laughs> it changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I mean, okay. you get a sense that she's not particularly happy with this conversation and doesn't want to have it uh beyond that probably not a whole lot more and at this point i probably can't tell if it's just because she's already mad because we didn't pick up the kid or yeah. what that has to do with anything yeah that's fair okay yeah. all right well uh we're you know desperate just to try to figure out who might have our friend so that's the reason for my questions i will leave you to it and thank you for your healing did mallory get healed salivar and mallory are, they can just hang out here Get them out for your, your to do list. Yeah. So don't worry, I'll take care of the NPCs. Okay. okay. Uh, so then all of you, uh, so uh, Lavinia, Sophia, Bear, Chovy, Irwin, you have most of the rest of the day to do stuff. What do you want to do this time? Do you guys decide what you're going to do? Yeah, since we're back in town, how about we go entertain ourselves a bit? If you like. I'd imagine you probably go back to the dormitory first, get your stable stuff set up. Yeah. That takes a little time. A couple hours go by in the afternoon. And then if you want, you can head over and just hang out and do whatever you want. It's fine. Could definitely blow off some steam. Right. Lavinia will probably honestly like to go speak to Charlotte, see if Roderick has come around. Kind of leave no stone unturned about like what's going on up north. I want to spend some time getting to know Lavinia gamble and see if I can find someone that I can start spending some time okay. to learn alchemy. Lavinia could take it since I've been in the town, maybe take them on a tour and show them where things are. Sure, yeah, I wanted to too. see if there's like a library. I wanted to clean this crappy armor too. Sure. Maybe go to like a armor guy. Yeah. And want to kind of do the usual, like trying to find somewhere to get bandages and laudanum and stuff that we could have used while we were out, but we didn't have because... Well, bandages and a lot of them you can buy from from the dock. So we won't. So yeah, we won't RP like your shopping yeah, purchases yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So um, just mark off what you're buying and keep track of your coin. Let let Jovi know if you're pulling from yeah. if you're pulling from the party funds. Yeah, we will I don't know. Maybe sure. we should give that to somebody else. Uh, Longley, look, like, I don't think he knows how to do math. So he keeps adding instead of taking away. <laughs> it's always very confusing. We have twenty gold okay, as so, he's throwing it <laughs> in silver into the water. Yeah. Okay, so I th I think it probably makes sense for today that you all had to spend some time at the dock, try to get healed, get Bruno situated. Uh, I would say the four of the original party probably head back to Loudon's, uh, probably make sure you can get a room, which you can, and make sure your cart and stuff are situated, make sure your chest is situated in a safe way. Uh, meanwhile, Lavinia would probably go to Charlotte's, yep. so she has somewhere to stay. Uh, and I would say most of the day kind of passes at that point with you all just kind of getting getting things situated. And then you end up one at a time or in smaller groups meeting back up at the box elder, which is, which has got a good crowd. Kind of, you see some people who are just drinking and eating. You see some people who are going upstairs. You see women that are kind of in, in men like scantily clad, leaning over the, like uh, the banister of the, uh, of the second floor, kind of trying to lure other people up because that's what the second floor is. Uh, and then you can see the, the back room, uh, where the most uncomfortable conversation in the history of, uh, of RPGs <laughs> took place several episodes ago. Ever. Oh my gosh. Is seen, seems to be much more filled out with many people that seems to be gambling and, and whatnot. So what is it you're all looking to do? Time to gamble. Okay. So, so people are drinking, people are gambling, people Lavinia are talking. Lavinia is just going to get a drink and mingle. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I want to gamble as well. Okay. All right. So we can do that. Is anybody talking? 
carousing, anything like that? See if I can get, uh, while I'm gambling, see if I can get anyone to tell me rumors uh, about anything that's out in the wild, about people with skulls or anything that's been going on while we've been gone. Lavinia is just going to catch up with people, honestly, because she's not sure of their whole agenda. Sure. And um, because this is probably her first time back in town for the winter. Uh, Okay. Uh, So, Irwin, you said you wanted to try to, like, get the gossip lay the land. Okay, you can go ahead and roll a rumor test. Uh, Go ahead and uh, make it standard. That's a seven. Uh, Okay. So, yeah, you, you... I mean, what is it specifically or you're looking to, are you just looking for any kind of gossip or are you looking for something in particular? The main thing that I wanted to bring up was the, if anyone had heard about big people with skulls for heads, but I just kind of wanted to see if anything also had happened while we were gone that was of interest because we were gone for like a week, right? Uh, About a week and a half. Yeah. Something like that, give or take. So something could have happened by then, like the boat could have left or. Boat did leave for sure. Yeah. Another boat showed up, a whaling boat. And people are saying it's most likely the last. Uh, they're getting like a shipment. And they're, they're getting some some oils and things like that. And then the monarchy is sending out some of its precious metals on this ship that's kind of doing their thing. Um, it's pretty standard stuff. Uh, a lot of people seem to be getting ready for the winter. So they're filling the stores. There is talk of a of a council meeting coming up. Pretty standard as well. Uh, there was there is a there is a rumor, however, going around a lot of the, the talk today uh, is that there was some sort of theft. Something went down at the uh, one of the mines for the monarchy and that uh, led to the arrest of a few wardens. Like a couple wardens were actually t- like they were seen in manacles and. Where does Saltpeter come from? Yeah, you would know. I guess you you got the the identification check. Well, there's a couple different ways. I mean, some people just get it from guano, but there's also more advanced ways of uh, of kind of sifting through certain uh, certain sediment inside caves. But it, yeah, it's it's like a mining process. So, but that's like the big thing today. It's like this ward Norton warden crime. Yeah, and that's it in terms of like the big scuttlebutt. Uh, when you're asking around about people with skulls and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people are kind of clammy uh, about that kind of thing. Uh, you get references. I mean, people reference like, ah, yeah, there's plenty of people in the woods there, you know, all sorts of things. You get up there, you, and people put on, you, you put on the bear coat, you think you're the bear, you know, and yeah, does things to people's mom. Uh, so people kind of just shrug it off as just being maybe ex-villagers, ex-prisoners that have wandered into the forest and just kind of lost it. No one seems to be too overly concerned. What else are you looking to, to grab? Has there like there was a the guy mentioned that the governor was interested in like Ustok? Ustuk, yeah. Ustuk. Is there any other like bounties or anything that people looking for work kind of thing? Oh, uh, there's a job board. Uh, there's definitely a job board, but most of the job board has to do with like labor. Uh, so yeah. there's people doing a lot of labor work, warehouse work. Uh, lumber work, that kind of stuff. Not like go hunt a crazy primeval monster work. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like a World of Warcraft board. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it then. I would say that there's a lot of people who are who are talking about like the council meeting and some of them, they're talking about whether they're going. Some of them are saying they're going. Some of them say they're not. Like it's just going to be boring like it was last year. It hasn't been good in years. And they think the governor is actually going to show up this time. And, and they're saying that the governor is going to show up. Uh, it's sometime in the next day or two, it seems. Maybe uh, I should go to that and see what's going on. All right. What else is? What else are people doing? Sophia would have done something similar, but wouldn't have, but would have also talked about kind of the folks that were kind of mutated because they were the ones that ultimately almost killed us. So the tentacle arm and chitinous head and all of all of that, kind of if there were people with these mutations that were kind of around. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll a Romero standard. Fail. I can't roll anything tonight. <laughs> and I'm not going to keep using this uh, all for myself. Yeah, I mean, you ask around and, I don't know, people kind of start to harass you at these kind of, idiotic questions you do pick up a couple little odds and ends um not the first time that anyone has referenced or told stories of finding or running into people where something foul has befell them depending on who you talk to and how far they are into their cups it's up to you whether you want to believe them but people talk about the idea of mutation the land being kind of cursed and that there's uh, no gods walk here only demon folk when they 
when they do, when you embrace them, then a little bit of them comes back onto you. So stuff like that, where they're just like, it's, they're not surprised. You don't get any specific stories or specific details, but yeah, people seem to be some of the older folk that have been around for a while, just saying, that's just, that's just life now. When you come to a place where the sun don't shine and where the gods don't look, somebody else here comes and takes that power. And yeah, unfortunately, there's some foes out there who succumb, and that's what's, uh, that's what's become of them. All right. Uh, is anybody else trying to talk it up? Yeah, they're pretty much be doing the same thing. I was going to get drunk first because I got carousing talent. Okay. I'll be like a friendly drunk. I just get like plus 10 to charm. It won't really help me. But okay. Whatever. So you start drinking a bit. Yeah. Okay. And I'll just kind of go around and be like, oh, I got this scar from this guy. And like freaking crazy tentacle arm. And... All right. So you try to, try to tell some stories. All right. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll a rumor check. Or actually, no, you said you want to do charm, right? But I still feel so. <laughs> Uh, same thing for you. I mean, like you try to you try to ingratiate yourself to these different groups. Try to be all, all you know, all like, hey, I got a story. You want to see a scar? I'll show you a scar. And like, yeah, you're just people just kind of look at you like they don't really know you that well. You're just some sort of you know, you're they don't know your face. Like they, you're, you're you kind of stand out, and so you get kind of you get kind of frozen out of some groups. But eventually, you you sit with others. Like some some people are willing to listen to you. You take nine points of mental peril from like the stress of kind of. Uh, of having to deal with this but you hear similar stories similar tales the idea that uh that there are others who have witnessed these things many who say that they come down from the north the older folk are like chickens coming home to roost type of thing type of stories it's, like, it's what we get when you're all sinner and these types of things come back at you if you have got the ability to leave, you might want to do so quickly. Got one more whaling ship before the full snows come, and if you don't get on it, you're all going to be here for a couple months, and the sun doesn't shine all that often over the winter. So, if uh, a few of them scary stories that go bumping in the night make you a little bit unsettled, big man, you might want to get out of here now. Keep so. that in mind. I guess I'll mention also that little village we found that was all torn to shreds that was the Splinter Group. Oh, okay. Maybe if anyone else knows about other villages up there. Um, the you start asking about villages. I guess a couple things happen. Uh, for one, um, people take a little bit more interest when you reference the fact that there's like a whole, like they, they actually know about that village. It doesn't really have a name. People just refer, reference it as like, as like, oh, that's, you know, that's is that a, a, a uh, like ref, refuge or something like that. It's no official name. Yeah. And when you start, Mentioning the fact that the whole town or that whole little tiny hamlet or village or whatever you want to call it was slaughtered in the night. Like people actually start getting a little nervous. Some of them call you, you know, call your bluff and think you're lying, right? They, they, they call you a liar and throw a little drink in your face or something like that. It's not funny to talk about people all that. What's wrong with you? Some of us have friends up there. What? But yeah, others. I brought, I brought some friends back that were there. I would say Mallory and Zaldivar are probably not with you. They've well, had know, but... they've had a rough, but no, I mean that could help you later. Um, but others believe you. Others others believe you just simply because to not believe is is potentially dangerous. And so you see some people get very upset. You spoken with the the wardens about this? If you have you spoken with the governor? I mean, there's there's a whole, whole village of folk out there that just got wiped out. There was there was there were dozens of, dozens of people there. There were there was oh, 50 or sixty, and they're all gone. You're saying. Uh, and so some of them get a little panicked, right? And then when you ask about like other settlements, like miss, everyone's like, well, you've got, yeah, farm here, farm here. You've got this Sunbury compound and you've got this and that. Um, we used to have that fort up to the east, but uh, uh, once they all die in the winter, then two years ago, and no one's really gone up that way since, but uh, yeah, that's about it. No like barbaric tribe encampment? No. No, not, not that. I've been here quite a long time, but I uh, haven't seen that now. But hey, it's a big place, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, you're getting like a lots of different responses if you're just kind of moving from group to group. Some of them seem concerned. Some of them don't take you seriously. Uh, but yeah, yeah. The only other compound they mention is some old fort that, that isn't really inhabited anymore. Gotcha. All right. Anybody else? Sophia's going to get drunk in a corner and just talk to herself. Like when she's done kind of talking to people and like she's not really getting anything and okay. she's just kind of like worried about Emily and annoyed that like people seem to be kind of 
blowing off concerns and oh, it's just stories and oh, whatever. But like for her, it's not just stories because Emily was taken and, you know, people are kind of just like, yeah, well, you know, it's just kind of what it is here. So she's just going to kind of go in the corner and just be like kind of cursing to herself. And Are you going to choose to fail your in- intoxication toughness role? I'm basically going to do an angry drunk, but I'm not going to like do anything with the intimidation part of it. Okay. All right. Um, so everyone's drinking, right? Yeah. How yeah. strong of drinks are you looking for? Are you looking for cheap stuff? Are you looking for average? Are you looking for like really strong stuff? Cheap, yeah, cheap, Lavinia's cheap. got a, just one cheap drink. That's all she's going to drink. All right. Go ahead and roll. For those of you uh, doing the cheap girl and roll an easy toughness test. If you're drinking something harder, you can wait for a second. Pass. Pass. Okay. Pass. Yeah, so you may have to hold your liquor just fine. Chovy, you doing something a little heavier? Yeah, I'm going a little heavier. Okay. Well, so. I think I have to fail it to yeah, get so. the thing. You can choose You can choose to fail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you so can. That's, that's, that's why I was asking you. Are yeah. you choosing yeah, to fail? Sorry. Okay, yeah. so the two of you are choosing to get drunk. You did a good roll. <laughs> Erwin, Erwin and Lavinia are, are, are maintaining their, their poise, and then... Oh, what's the difficulty for this? Uh, so for you, just do challenging. Minus 10. Okay, so I passed. Okay, and so yeah, the three of you drinking, managing to hold your liquor. Okay, and so the two of you want to do some gambling? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, so um, so we do one hand of this just really quickly. I have this little new this new game. Every time I introduce like a new gambling game, it just goes poorly. So, <laughs> and I've only done it once. So let's do it a second time, see if we can get worse than this. Uh, so who's, so you, the two you can play? Yeah, as you're waiting, as you're waiting to find some tip, some sort of table to sit at uh, in the back, where there's a lot of different games going on. There's dice games, card games, etc. Uh, you do manage to get into a table that has a couple individuals. You see two that are familiar, uh, I would say, to Bear, not because you know them, but the last time you were here, you saw them playing, playing a game, a private game with Markov in the morning. Uh, it's like a really tall ogre and a really short female halfling that are just sort of sitting next to each other. The only one that seems to really be doing the talking is the ogre. Like the uh, that the little halfling looks like crazy, like crazy wild, like one of those little troll dolls. Like like looks like feral, oh, yeah. <laughs> feral almost. Uh, and then the ogre is like bald headed, but they're all sitting there. And you sit down at their table and you start rolling some dice with them. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know. I like making like weird little dice games and stuff like that. So here's what we're gonna do. So you guys know about uh, you guys know what our what like Texas Hold'em and stuff is, right? Yeah. The idea of like the flop and everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, here's the rules. You can anytime you want. You can roll a gambling test to try to reveal a potential tell about a person you're playing against, and if you're able to succeed on that, uh, then you will get some sort of indication to the quality of their hand, right? So you'll know if they have a good hand, and you got to get out, or if you know if they have a bad hand, and you want to stay in. And that's basically it. Uh, aside from that, uh, all everyone is going to everyone who's playing rolls two d ten, and they keep it private, so don't tell anyone, even your even your fellow fellow folk. Uh, in the in the center of the table, there'll be uh, Four rolls, like all at once, 4d10. And the goal is to make the best hand out of four dice. So there's no straights or flushes or anything like that. It's all about it's all about uh, trying to make kind of hands. So there's twins, which is two of a kind. There's uh, triplets, which is three of a kind. There's swingers, which is two pair. And then there's quas, which is which is four of a kind. Uh, there's also just high sum, which is basically add your... If you, if you don't have anything like that, you just add them all together. And whoever's got the larger number some tiebreakers and stuff we can get to but that's basically it so quads four of a kind is best hand four tens is the nuts right swingers two pair that's after triplets three of a kind twins two of a kind and then high sum all right uh there's betting uh right after you do your private roll there's a bet after doing the uh the flop uh we roll the four four common dice and that's it okay let's give it a try got it Lavinia is like behind them. Now, do I know either like the ogre or the other one at all? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, you you tend to know. I would say you probably know, not necessarily personally, but you would know who they are. Um, they are they are known more commonly uh, if for those who kn- know them well, or like they refer to them. They're piss and vinegar. Uh, so there's yeah, it's <laughs> which kind one's of piss? Coming. So there's Peswit Chance, which is the name of the halfling. Uh, and they just nickname her. Uh, piss and then there's vin bredick who's uh the ogre and so they are always together uh they're they're fur trappers they're they go out into the the woods and they what's the ogre's name vin bredick and so the two of them are always together uh the ogre actually does all the talking uh and is seemingly the more intelligible one the one who can actually speak intelligibly and then the halfling is a little wild and will tear your eyes out i'll go ahead and i will play for both the 
the other two, the fur trappers that are at the table with you, you two play for yourself. So four of you at the table. All right. So go ahead and again roll it. Roll it in secret. The two that you roll. Can you cheat? Like do a sleight of hand thing? Yes, you can. If you want to try to cheat, you're welcome to try to knock like a. Well, actually, I, I think it's it's not a gambling test because the gambling doesn't really do the cheating thing. Gambling is more that would be skullduggery. Yeah, skullduggery. Thank yeah. you. That's the so if you wanted to try to do a skullduggery test, uh, it'll be a secret test because you don't necessarily know. Uh, I want to see if I can read how their hands are. Okay, uh, this will be a challenging. Rolled a sixty-six. I needed a fifty-eight, so I failed. Okay. Crit fail. It's crit fail too. Sixty-six. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get the feeling that they uh, they both have really good hands. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a tiny bet. Okay. All right. So, Jovi, how are you feeling over there? Pretty good. All right. So we're betting in, co- in uh, excuse me in brass. So uh, you can bet uh, however much you want. Five brass. If you throw a silver down, that's like, whoa, hey, yeah. settle down there, buddy. Right, five, that type of five brass. Okay, so you drop five brass. All right, you calling? Yeah, let's call it. All right, they're going to call too. All right, here's the flop. Five, six, seven, and nine. Five, six, seven. So I'm going to go off of, since I critically failed, I don't get to do it again. Let's see if the hand changes. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, once per hand. Yeah. Okay, so currently there's 20 brass in this here pot. Five, six, seven, and nine. All right, Erwin, since you started the betting off this time, same thing. What do you want to do? Eight more. You're going to raise it eight, so there's up to 28 brass in this pot. What are you thinking about there, Chovy? I'm thinking you're crazy. What? I call it. You're going to call? <laughs> Wait. Okay. So now there's like 36 brass, which is, I think, three silver in yeah. the pot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the ogre will fold, uh, but the halfling will stay. Okay. So... Uh, because you made the initial bet, Irwin, what do you got? I got two pair. Two pair. Nine okay. and a seven Very is nice. mine, so that's a nine and a seven. Right? Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Nice. I only had one pair of six. Okay. Uh, the uh, the halfling also has two pair, nine and seven. Uh, so since we tied, uh, what we have to do now, and we tied with the exact same pair, uh, we actually have to roll. Uh, we just roll off. So it's just you add the total. What you got? My other hand was better. Well, no, just... I have a three and a seven. Okay, so you got 10. I have a 10 and a one. I have 11. So 11 beats 10. Oh, that's how that works. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like you roll and see whatever is your total. Okay. Okay. So you just lost a bunch of money. Okay. Uh, Jovi, you can start the betting this time. A one. You're going to bet <laughs> one brass. Yeah. Okay. One brass it is. You can call, you can fold, or you can stay. Uh, right. I'll call it. Okay. Um, I think Pez... So the half lane again. It's going to go ahead and raise that uh, on a five brass. So total, total best five brass. So you, you need to spend four to stay in. Call. Yeah. Vin, yeah the, Vin's going to do the same. So we've got 20 brass in the pot once more. We've got two ones, a three, and a six. Two ones, three, and a six. All right, Jovi, what are you going to do? All in. Gonna five silver. So, what? 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 Okay. Is, that, is there a max? I mean, the, your chest, I assume. Okay. You're betting five silver. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Five silver into a 20 brass pot. All right. This is the guy who throws silver into rivers. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. What are you going to do, Aaron? Gamble check. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Same difficulty. 24. So success. Okay. Uh, Pez seems to be, from what you can tell, she's sitting there kind of rocking away. And she's got hair all down her face, and she's super, she's super disheveled. But she's got this like grin, like this. She's like she's trying to hold back this grin. She's like tugging on her hair a bit. Uh, Vin, on the other hand, uh, looks a little disappointed. Does he tell me anything or no? How does that work? Uh, so, do a contested check or something? I don't. No, know. No, 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 no. I mean, you can. No, it's it's fine. You can. Would you say that that Chovy looks genuinely? Confident or? Oh yeah, Chubby's excited. Okay. <laughs> Whatever hand he has, it doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. It's freaking halflings, man. He's halflings. Said five silver. Yeah, there's five silver. You bet. No. Okay, so you're out. Yeah. Vin is also out. Pez calls. Okay. All right. Reveal Let's your. Reveal. It. Uh, pair triple threes or triple ones in a pair of threes. It's best. It's a best four dice. Okay, so triple one. Okay. Triple ones. Yeah. Okay, uh, Pez <laughs> Pez reveals uh, four ones. <laughs> four ones. Oh. I rolled two ones with her. That's why she's, she's excited. Nice. 
So yeah, you just lost a bunch of silver, buddy. Yeah. Can we do like a gamble check to like see like if we do this for a little while, how much? Yeah, money? yeah, we can totally do that. Yeah. Okay. So after a while, uh, so we'll just fast forward through some stuff. Uh, I would say considering that uh, this little halfling has been taking you all to task uh, for a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it a challenging gamble test for the two of you at this sure. point. Uh, Vin doesn't seem to be as good at it, but but Pez this definitely seems to be capable. So uh, go ahead and roll a challenging gamble test. And I'm going to want to know your degree of success as well. Or failure. <laughs> Another crit fail. Okay. It's an 88. I got 100. That's so you both crit fail. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So over the course of the rest of the night, um, I'm going to say that both of you end up losing uh, five more silver. And all the clothes on your back. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was that kind of poker. So yeah. So by the end of the night, this halfling, mainly the halfling, has taken, was it 10, ten plus from, silver ten from, from Chovy and, and five, five and, a, and a little bit of brass yeah. from you. Yeah, uh, I need to go back to playing horseshoes. I can't play this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Got to go find the dwarves. Okay, so um, as the night kind of progresses and you're sitting around with them, they get a little chatty. They get a little, a little talkative. And so like you, you start playing with them for a few hours and throw out some of those same questions that you asked before. And, you know, uh, Vin, the, uh, the larger of the two, uh, when you mention, you kind of ask different things here and there. Uh, the idea of Ustuk kind of, catches their attention and so you share some stories and they talk about how they've seen it before and you know one day one day not not yet if they can ever get like five or six other people maybe but uh but they're not not ready uh and then uh at the mention of individuals with sort of skull-shaped heads you see that ven and vin and pez kind of share this this quick look and at this point, you've probably gotten gotten a good read on Vin. Not a good read on Pez, but a good read on Vin the Ogre. And you can tell that there's a little bit of recognition. This is something he's heard of before. He looks over towards you and he says, I see them. Hmm. Yeah, there. But uh, kept our distance. You understand me? Hmm. They kept their distance from us. Every now and then when we're... Off collecting the pelts, we get this, get this feeling that we're being watched, and uh, I gotta tell you, it's probably them. Catch a strange face in the dark, torchlight that just comes up out of the shadows. We've, uh, we've managed to assuage their curiosity by leaving a few pelts every now and then as, as payment, and. They seem to let us be, whoever they are. From what I understand, they're the group of people that took one of our compatriots. Where do you... Have you seen them? Like, is it in the same place all the time? No. No. They're all throughout Britain. I've seen them south of the river. I've seen them north. Mm, But we don't see them all the time. But I think they're there, though. They're sneaky, whoever they are. They know the place as well. The closer we get to the mountains, the more likely we feel like we're going to see them. When we were out finding our way back, we went through a town or a small village, I suppose is the better way to describe it. And uh, all of the people were, unfortunately, there's not a pleasant way to put this, basically slaughtered. And it looked like they had taken animal skulls and put them on top of them. Do you think that that's something that they do? That's a pity, isn't it? It's quite a pity, but I don't know, mate. I don't know at all. I haven't talked to them. I don't even know if they speak. They got these ugly faces and whatever they are, but I'll say this. Piz and I, we, we've been working these woods for about a part of three years. We've killed all men at a critter. We've sort of them all. We got a joke that was just sending them, send them to a better place. But every now and then, every now and then, we find the ground that's already been taken. It ain't, it ain't anyone here. It ain't fur trippers. So we find these carcasses, and they ain't got no heads, but they still got their pelts. And it don't make no sense at all. I don't know if they're the same people or not. Not really sure. I'll say this though, be careful how far north you go, I don't like it, 
and not when I'll get when I'll get close to them there solo silent mountains up there. Those double fangs. It's a bad place. I got that feeling while we were out. It's it was not a good experience the past week. But this has been a good experience gambling with you. I'll I'll take your money any night of the week, sir. Well, pets will. But then I'll take hers. She don't know how to count. <laughs> so it's a bit feral. It's good, cause it's good that she lives to it last time. Last time someone beat her, she nearly ripped out their eyes. So, probably better result for you. How much your eyes are worth. <laughs> yep. And then as he says that, uh, you look at, at Piss and she's just sort of like, with her eyes, takes her two fingers and just like points them at her eyes and then points them at you and then points them back at her eyes. So she's watching you the whole time. And then you see her just like just like recklessly just start eating some weird dry piece of meat. Just that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, if uh, if you ever encounter him, I recommend you steer clear. Uh, you've managed to we've managed to be in their woods for years without having any sort of incident like yours. Kind of peculiar, if you ask me. Been here. Your lot's been here not even a fortnight and you're already getting kidnapped. Probably eaten or something. I hope not. All right, so is anyone doing anything else? Sophia's still muttering to herself in the corner. I'm probably going to get drunk now that I lost all that money. <laughs> okay. You're going to just let it happen? Yeah. All right. So by the end of the night, let's say three of you are pretty much face down the oh table. Chovy's got to like nudge you just to get you to, to wander back. I would say that... The four of you, the four of the OG crew, are stumbling drunk in the night through the the streets, stumbling past people who didn't quite make it, and are face down in the face down on the ground, just just go through their uh, pockets. Yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. Hey, if you want more corruption, <laughs> might uh, as well. <laughs> <laughs> got a bunch from before, um, but very dark out. There's an occasional occasional light. Coming from a window here or there, the seams of shutters, it's the snow that's starting to fall. And you're trying as best you can to remember the way back to Loudon's dormitory. You were there for a day or two. Take a few wrong turns, stumble into an alleyway, turn back around. As you pass by the box elder for the second time, clearly having circled round the wrong way, you pass by Doc Qualley's. You pass by this leather worker that Bear had spent an hour with trying to get his hide armor cleaned. You hear the sound of whispers coming from the dark alleys to the your left and to your right. You hear voices cascading out of these half-open windows, lights off. You hear shuffling as if somewhere around you, someone's following you. I think it's just Gretel. No, she's right here. So this, these like loudly, because you're drunk. Yeah. Oh, I think it's Jules Grin. You know, just kind of, <laughs> none of you are probably entirely of right of mind yet. So as you're moving your way back, you hear this shuffling of footsteps in front of you, behind you. And as you turn the corner, Chovy would say you're out in front. You're probably the, the least drunk since you're the only one who didn't choose to fail. You bump in to someone kind of stumbles, fall down, like much bigger than you. No, pardon me. And as you can go to start climbing back up with the three of them behind you, just stumbling off one another, not not quite paying attention to what's going on, you look up and you see about a six-foot-tall individual with a hooded cloak. You can't see their face. They have this small torch that's giving off some light, but it's holding behind their shoulder so as not to cast light onto their face. Torch you probably will hold and goes scattering across and douses. It becomes really dark all of a sudden. And then you hear something, like a hiss, just emerge from beneath that hood. And they kick you and begin running down an alleyway to the north. Oh.